Hey guys, uh, tonight we're checking out the uh, Berserker chest rig, or not not chest rig, I'm sorry, uh, plate carrier from Matt Bach, uh, as well as their admin pouch and uh, triple M4 pouch. Uh, so I looked up the prices, I got this in trade, um, I looked up the prices before uh, shooting this, and they're currently on version 3 of the plate carrier, I'm not sure which version this is, we'll probably find the tag as we go and I'll look foolish, but it's not version 3. Uh, so version three plate carrier right now from their website is $625. The admin pouch is $110 and the triple M4 pouch is $82. Uh, so for a grand total of like, I don't know, 800 and change, getting close to uh, $900. Um, that is wildly uh, too expensive for what you're getting. But... Uh, I don't think normal people are buying these things, uh, just based on the materials. It's made for dudes that gotta go fast, uh, all the time, right? No time to chill. Um, so we'll get it on the table and take a look at it. It's really interesting the way that it's put together. Uh, I'm a fan of some things, like it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, most of that though is due to just how unique it is. Um, so we'll look at it and, and kind of see the wins and misses. My only other experience with Matt Bach is, uh, I had a thermocell pouch that I, wound up uh buying second hand from somebody which fit uh the thermocell without any issues but it uses this really gnarly uh attachment system which i'm not really a fan of um it's just a really great way to tear up your fingers so uh let's get this thing on the table and take a closer look at it so you guys know what you're getting into if you're ready to drop 800 bucks on a plate carrier setup all right so in an effort to not be totally misleading uh, the version three, uh, that's on their website right now, uh, they point out a bunch of included features, uh, one of which is the, the triple, uh, mag pouch up front. So, uh, you can save yourself 82 bucks based on the current generation. You don't need to buy, uh, mag pouches. All right. <clears throat> so with that small, uh, savings in store, uh, let's go through this thing. Actually, I saw, uh, an advertisement that's, uh, totally off tangent or off, uh, off train of thought, but I saw an advertisement the other day, uh, for one of their medical bags that was on sale. Um, it was on a Facebook post. They're like, Oh, you'd save 10%, uh, right now with this code. And I jokingly put, Oh, that's like $160 off, right? Like that math shouldn't check out for a backpack. Uh, and then I went to the link and, uh, clicked on it. I'm sorry. I said $150 off. I went to the link and clicked on it, and it's a $1,600 backpack. Uh, so this stuff is, nobody, I don't, even s, &S Precision can't pretend like they're only after contract money uh, like Matt Bot can, right? <clears throat> no human is buying uh, this plate carrier. All right, so with that in mind, I did trade for this thing uh, with the sole purpose of shooting a video and then getting it out of my hands as quick as possible. Uh, but once I got it, uh... I don't know. Maybe I'll hold on to it. I don't. I don't have a ton of money into this thing via trades, um, and it's interesting. But I also don't know if I'm in love with it. So let's start with the uh, admin pouch, just because it's off and it'll be easy to uh, look at. So it is. If you've never seen Matt Box stuff before, it is this crazy, like, feels waterproof, um, rip stop material. Uh, it's, it's got a good bit of sheen to it just based on the, the goofy coating of it, but it's incredibly light. Um, so we'll use this. This is the, the cummerbund extender. Um, we'll use this as an example. Uh, it is one layer, uh, with laser cut holes in it. And that's, that's all that Matt Bach feels that you need for, uh, a load bearing purpose, uh, surface. Like this stuff is crazy, crazy, crazy strong. Uh, it has zero stretch to it uh, whatsoever, um, but it is incredibly lightweight. It's really interesting stuff. I just don't know that the world needs this material, uh, at least for this purpose. All right, so looking at the admin pouch, um, I was pleasantly surprised when I opened this up. I just thought it was a GP pouch. Um, but you open it up, and you've got some uh, elastic loops in the back there. Uh, a little bit of Velcro for whatever Velcro needs you have. And then on this side, uh, the front face, you've got some Velcro. 
and a little bit of tweeve here, which I would imagine is so that you can stick a end user device in there and maybe Velcro it to the face and then that just kind of retains it. Uh, I might be wrong. You can put GRG cards in there or something like that, uh, note cards, whatever. Uh, but this, the kind of stretchy nature of that lends me to believe that you're supposed to stick uh, electronics in there. Right. And then it's got this little paracord uh, piece to keep it from flopping open. And obviously the whole back of the pouch is Tegris, uh, which is your, your mounting. Right. Uh, really odd tuck tab mounting. So like you thread these, it's all traditional Molly uh, or pals on the surface, but then you thread these in and it's like a one row uh, malice clip where you, you, you feed it in and then this tab catches onto that loop and then locks it in place. Uh, I have no desire to mess around with these, but it, I would imagine it's very stable uh, once you do it. I would, I would also imagine that it's a pain to thread this stuff. And you once you have it set up, I doubt you want to take it apart. Uh, what I found a little disappointing on this uh, was that it's a single zipper. Uh, so unless I'm wildly wrong on the purpose of this thing, Double zipper makes a lot of sense to me. Um, but maybe the idea is like you're only ever gonna do this one-handed uh, and you're just gonna have to run it the full length. I don't know. It's it's not poorly made by any stretch. Like the, the construction quality is is very good uh, as I would hope it would be for a $110 pouch. Um, it's, it's an interesting pouch. All right, looking at the plate carrier. All right, so first things first, this uh, triple M4 pouch uh, sucks. I do not like it at all. Uh, and I can't imagine paying $82 with a straight face for this thing. Uh, but it has the same mounting on the back, which uh, unnecessary the way that it's used. Um, and then it's the, the face is this, this same material. And I can't remember the name of the material off the top of my head, but it, it is like matte box material. Um, as far as I know, they're the only ones that use it, and that's why everything is ex as expensive as it is. But uh, it's clearly a um, over-the-beach type setup, so the bottom of all these pouches is uh, open for maximum drainage. Uh, what I don't like about this is there is absolutely no stretch in these, and they are pretty skin-tight to your magazines. So in the intro you saw, I had Stanag mags in there and a... Uh, is this... Gen M3 uh, PMAG. So they fit, they both fit fine. Um, but it is so skin tight uh, that with the Tegris backer on there and the mags in there kind of catching up here, like you can't take the cummerbund off with the mags installed. Um, it's got these kind of cry-esque uh, pull handles on here. I got, if you were like He-Man and you were cranking on that, you could probably get it out. I got one side close, uh, the other side just wasn't having it. And it didn't feel like a good idea to just keep yanking on that. So I took the mags out, lifted the flap, and then it was fine. Uh, that said, even if I was stuck with this plate carrier uh, or issued this plate carrier, I would not use this, this pouch. There's just better pouches out there. Um, a 10-speed pouch would make a lot of sense. Really, any pouch other than this one, I think, would make sense. Because you can't, you can't mount anything on the front of it. Um, and 10-speeds, you can... I think there's... Uh, pull tab compatible 10 speeds now. So like there's really no reason not to unless you just need a drainage that bad. Um, and if you need a drainage that bad, maybe you could put a grommet in the bottom of your 10 speed. I don't know. I just don't like this this uh, M4 pouch. All right, I was pleasantly surprised uh, to find out that it had sewn in uh, radio pouches, which um, that's cool. That's a nice, uh, it makes your $600 plate carrier hurt a little bit less that you don't have to buy radio pouches. Uh, and I would imagine that they're sized for 152s and 148s and other cool guy radios. Uh, I've misplaced mine, uh, so I dropped in a Motorola, a commercial Motorola here. And you can see that that fits fine in there with plenty of room for the side connector. So that's exciting. Uh, these are kind of interesting pouches. I'll get this radio out of the way. And, uh, I'll try to get this up here where you guys can see it. Uh, but it's got a Tegris uh, liner along the lip to help keep that open so you can get your radio in there easier. Um, and then it has a bunch of laser cut holes on the back of it. 
uh, for maximum drainage and if you got a 163 for maximum heat transfer into your body uh, and then the bottom is kind of interesting you've got this like bikini bottom thing here with uh, some elastic on the bottom but the elastic is like only going to allow these to separate but not enough to get a battery out at least as far as i can imagine so it's kind of an interesting setup why, why they had that there other than just to retain these two loops together i don't know i'm sure somebody crazy smart designed this thing and that made sense to them and then it's got a shot cord uh pull tab on the top to keep your radio uh, tethered. I do have a concern that um, if you had a 152, especially 152, 148 to a certain extent in this pouch, it would be riding crazy high. Um, obviously I don't swim for a living, but if I was doing things like that, I, I think I would want that a little bit lower uh, to free up some, some arm movement over the top. But I could be wildly wrong on that. Uh, and I probably am, so no worries there. All right, uh, front plate bag is all laser cut. Uh, so you've got a good bit of Molly real estate on here. You've got a full six rows all the way up to here. Uh, and then you dip down to four uh, for really two, two rows of four columns there. Um, down lower, you could, you could use that however staggered you wanted but to use your four you'd you'd tuck into the vest up here and then you'd be out and then you'd tuck back in and then you'd be out so two two rows of four four columns um okay let's get uh the plates out of here so that i can show you the plate bags this is swimmer cut all i have for swimmer cut is m210s um the front plate bag was relatively drama free um so no complaints there and i'll get that plate out of there to show you guys what's going on. The uh, closure is on the front face of the plate and it is a uh, hook facing away from your body, loop facing towards you. Uh, the plate bag is relatively simple. Good bit of Velcro there. If you had shorter plates, you could tuck this plate or this you know, pocket up there better. Uh, and you do have a nice pull tab in case you need to try to remove your plates quickly. Uh, you'll see like the inside, this coating on here, kind of interesting. Like, I don't know what the lifespan on this stuff is. I think the material will be strong, but it's definitely gonna show wear uh, pretty quickly. And then what's interesting is they saved all of the uh, stretchiness that they could have put in those mag pouches and they put it just along the outer perimeter of the plate bag. I don't, I wouldn't want to, if I was putting, if I was paying my own money for this thing, I would not want to put a plate any thicker than those M210s in here, uh, cause it was, it was taut. Um, so I'm, I don't know how much stretch you could really work out of that thing if you needed to. Um, okay. So that's the plate bag looking internal. Uh, we've got, mine's just called a ballistics carrier size, medium, small. And I don't know if Matt Bach is a associate of First Fear, but that when I first saw that, I was like, oh, that's cool. First Fear made these for him. The logo looks very similar, in my opinion, but it's been a while since I've seen a First Fear logo. Um, okay, we'll look at the plate bag or the back plate bag and then we'll talk about the shoulder straps. Okay, so looking at the rear bag, it's kind of interesting how it has this uh, 6094 uh, profile to it. So you've got full six columns all the way up to the top. Um, but what really sucks is the uh, cummerbund pass-through here on the back. There's this gap in, in the sides to the rear plate bag. And I don't know if they were sold on this and then tried putting plates in it or not. But when the shoulder of the swimmer plate hits this new side on the, the rear plate bag, the timing is just really inconvenient for where you hit the widest part of the plate. Uh, right at this like new material and it is really really hard to get this stretchy material over the shoulder of that plate um so you'll see front plate bag i got the velcro lined up really easy the rear plate bag like i was struggling and i still have uh, velcro hanging out but i you can see i've got plenty of slack in the plate bag i just can't get that past that corner of that plate 
Uh, so I don't know if that's an issue of the exact sizing of these M210s or if that's just where things line up, but um, without like really, really gurn on this thing, I don't think I could have seated the plate any better. And I'm, I'm hesitant about that stitch right there. I don't wanna, I don't wanna blow that out, especially when I'm not sure if I'm keeping this thing. Right, so let's get the, the rear plate out of here. That's gonna fight me. All right, <clears throat> got that out of there. And let's let's look at this rear plate bag a little bit more. So you can see the uh, the cummerbund passing through this like giant opening here, uh, and then that's just tightened up by lacing around these uh, holes, you know, much like you see here. Um, what I will say is, uh, if you're at all a normal size human and you want to have internal radios and plate bags or side plates, you're definitely going to need this extender. Uh, and I, I've talked about that ad nauseum in the past about how much that changes the size of your cummerbund, but you can see this one's paid all the way out and, uh, I maybe could have squeezed it in one radio, uh, but definitely not side plates and radios. That would have been, uh, no bueno. And then you can kind of see where this... The stretch material is sewn in here. Um, I don't know. I just, it's a, like an obvious failure point, and I just didn't want to risk it. All right. Um, let's look at the uh, the cummerbund here. It's kind of an interesting cummerbund. I, uh, after struggling to get that plate in there, I looked at the cummerbund, and like the laser cut is not at all apparent on here. Uh, so I thought I had flipped the cummerbund over, and I was looking at the inside of it, and then. I don't know. I thought I had it all cattywampus, but it, it was okay. Um, so looking at this thing, you've got side plate pockets built in, uh, which is cool. They look fairly tall, but I don't think they're going to fit the, the big green issued uh, side plates. And I don't have any of those handy. Uh, so I definitely think it's cut more for uh, cool guys side plates. Um, but there you go, you got a pocket. You really can't control where those things sit, so you just kinda check in the box. Yep, I got side plates, and I hope they're in the right spot. Um, and then you can see the, the side plate pocket there, maybe. So this, this shiny material, I'm sure, is showing up like garbage on the camera. Um, you've got two uh, columns of PALs uh, before the side plate pocket which is interesting, uh, but you're gonna need that to clear the radios. And then you've got three usable columns, three no, ac three actual columns on the face of the, the side plate pocket. Um, <clears throat> so if you had to uh, suck up some size on here, uh, it's, kinda, it's kinda sewn to lead me to believe that like you could kinda fold that over and this could start going into the cummerbund pocket if you had to. Um, and then your, your MSAP side plate should really only go to that Velcro. Um, interesting design feature there. Uh, I feel like they could have just, I don't know, cut cut that profile off sooner. But whatever, that's that's what they did. Um, so built-in side plate pockets, built-in uh, dual radio pockets. And then you've got a drag handle up here, uh, which is kind of like old school... Uh, Pals webbing, when we didn't have all the printed webbing yet, they just folded their material over a couple of times. So this is probably three layers thick here. Uh, and then bar tacked into the where the shoulder straps meet the rear plate bag. Uh, this is a weird material, so I don't know if you could really pull somebody with that, but you probably have a better chance than most of that style of shoulder strap or drag handle. I don't know. If it's Uncle Sam's money, I'd give it a shot. If it's my money, probably not. I would probably not use that for anything more than just carrying this thing around. Um, and then looking at the, uh, the shoulder straps here, let's get this pad out of the way. Very 1694 style shoulder strap pad here. Um, more of that material. And there is some padding in here. Actually, a very nice amount of padding. Uh, fairly minimal, but definitely good cushion. Uh, some comms routing with some one wrap sewn in there. That's a nice touch. 
and then uh, it is the front plate bag has the hook and the rear plate bag has the loop so loop facing up hook facing down and uh, if you needed to uh, shorten that up at all you're just going to have overhang coming off each end which the overhang on this one at least goes to the back uh, and the f internal overhang would, would just run you know inside the plate bag so that's not a bad setup for as simple as that is What is interesting is that they uh, did the fold over uh, into your neck, uh, which I'm not a fan of, because now you've got this exposed uh, edge of the loop here, which can get kind of sharp, uh, especially if it happens to be riding right up against your neck, which that would have been done backwards, and I still think they could have done the one wrap in there without too much issue. Um, yeah, that's that's the, uh, the Matt Bach uh, Berserker plate carrier you know right around 800 bucks for that thing um yeah i don't know i'm not a huge swimmer plate guy um so i definitely don't like that if i keep this i'm married to having a set of swimmer plates but that said the m210s are pretty reasonable to use so uh if you see this and you're like that's awesome i gotta have it and i don't want to spend 800 bucks hit me up uh i'm I'm not married to this thing. So uh, there you go. Matt Bach, uh, Berserker, Blake Carrier. Thanks, guys.